Señoras y señores televidentes, Azul Televisión cederá lo que queda de la emisión de hoy a Random Entertainment y no a los pare de sufrir. Así terminamos la programación de hoy, correspondiente al día 22 de abril de 2022. Buenas noches. Hello and thrice hello. Welcome to our umpteenth hard sell special where, 40 years after the Falkland War, we take an enchanting visit to Tlentifini Marhazo. Of course it isn't, and if I had an entire episode about Argentine commercials from 1982, I'd punch everybody's throats. You see, it's a delicate situation. For a start, this is a part of a British series although not officially. The channel it's hosting is actually British. The topic of the Falkland War was actually covered in a warning from history. But if you don't speak Spanish, you understand the divide. Finally, there's this Argentine bloke I know called Eseneco, who is watching some of the Bob the Fish repertory, including ITV in the face. I'm also doing some payback for a recent episode of the main series, Remember that Palmolive commercial? Turns out it was Argentine, or at the very best, a pan-regional campaign that was likely spread to other countries in the region, like probably Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, Bolivia? Who knows? Boolean methods, just for searching one of the lyrics, had led me to a blog called Nerd and Rehab, and while looking at the comments, I noticed that there was another commercial jingle from 1984 that helped me narrow down what country was that commercial was from. And that was Argentine. Historically, there are five TV channels in Buenos Aires. Each of them is or was arbitrarily named after its channel frequency. 2, 7, 9, 11, and 13. There are call signs, and given in order of antiquity for the Buenos Aires channels. LS82 for Channel 7, the government-run network that started in 1951, and the LS86 for the commercial channel America that started in 1966, as TV2. Outside of Buenos Aires in the analog days, you had to pick up two plus one television channels, two locally generated services, and the relay of Channel 7 from Buenos Aires. One in the worst case with no relays, like in Noken, with Channel 7 owned by Telefe. Cordoba was lucky because it had three local television stations assigned, 8, 10, and 12, a case study. The UHF ban was in a rather unlucky situation. As far as I know, in the analog age, a handful of low-powered non-subscription local television networks were assigned, and even on the VHF band for entire neighborhoods of Buenos Aires, like a Channel 4 in Berazategui. But that's another story. These ads specifically came from Channel 9, 
the first commercial TV channel in Buenos Aires, but not in Argentina. That's Channel 12 Cordoba, now owned by RTR, owners of Channel 13. In the reason why I chose it in a specific part of its history wasn't because of the graphics used during this time. It was because of ownership issues. After the military dictatorship was over, the government, who nationalized all of the commercial television stations, started the privatization process. In 1984, Channel 9 was the first to go, being handed back to its previous owner, Alejandro Romay. It won't take until 1987, for context, for Channel 2, America as a channel name didn't happen to them at the time, until the turn of the decade, that is 1989-1990, to channels 11 and 13. 11 became Telefe, 13 was handed to a new company called Artear. Romay's administration was a rather selfish one, being known as Canal Nueva Libertad, Channel 9 Liberty or Channel 9 Freedom with a dove as its logo, making it feel like an odd religious channel. In fact, sometimes the shape of the dove would make you believe that it was actually the map of some unspecified country or region. But never mind that for now. In 1995, the then iconic numeral 9 in Helvetica lost the dove, and it was now encased inside hearts being impaled by a green triangle. The surprise happened in 1997 when Prime TV, the seven affiliates in regional southeastern Australia, bought Canal Nueva Libertad for a sum of 135 million, later on sold to 74 million. You weren't expecting the channel to adopt the same Prime logo as the channels in Australia and the one they were building in New Zealand at the time. They spent much of 1998 trying to counter the negative image that the channel had on the Romai to build a new image from scratch, wasting 20 million pesos in the process with the aid of a local Lambinanish agency with traits of Novocom called Media Luna. Consequently, in January 1999, the Australianized Canal Nueve Launched with a new name, Azul Televisión. Aquí comienza su transmisión, Azul Televisión. In those days, having a name that undermined the channel number was one step ahead. In those days, ATC was having a bit of an identity crisis, and they thought ATC was associated with some kind of negative politician. And they thought rebranding to Canal Siete in 2000 would solve the naming divide. Very good items, as would if they had at the turn of the millennium, felt like a channel from an expensive cable package. At the time, Azul also administered regional stations in Mar del Plata on Channel 10 and Paraná on Channel 9. These two were sold off to Neo Media and Relay El Tres's programming. The Azul TV logo tried to hide the 9 in the same way as the 1990 rebrand of the 5 BBC Ray. The 9? In the same way as the 1990 rebrand of the 5 stations of the BBC Radio Network, in the same way as the 1990 rebrand of the BBC Radio Network did to the numerals of the five services. A ringing off by wave, and the ring, by the laws of the Gestalt, automatically creates the impression of a numeral nine. Those commercial breaks are from Buenos Aires. If they were from Mar del Plata, then we will see ads like these. Estamos adelgamateando con yerba adelgamate. Única yerba adelgazante del país. Adelgamate. Adelgase tomando mate con yerba adelgamate. Anyway, here are the ads. The first ads are from June 1999 when Azul Televisión was still in its initial configuration. Wow, a commercial featuring cleavage and jiggling breasts. Oh no, it's a boot like younger Diego Maradona in an alternate timeline where he was born later, hadn't taken enough drugs, and the hand of God was actually Mexican. Maybe English? And 
fact, you thought this commercial was for attractive women. No. It's actually a cigarette ad. Complete with the cigar being lit. And such and such and such. Ah, oh, says so it was this Count Maradona smoking it. Don't be fooled by the naming. Parisienne is actually Swiss, but in Europe it is actually sold in the German speaking world under the singular Parisienne, meaning that the product isn't even sold in France, just in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. In its native Switzerland, Parisienne had interesting theatrical commercials at the time, as part of a commercial called Parisienne, as part of a campaign called Parisienne People. One of the most famous ads being David Lynch's backwards action commercial. Down there in Argentina, it was a whole other story. All in line with the global marketing trends of the 90s involving heavy usage of live action, capturing feelings, while the product is actually secondary to the purpose of the ad. Don't know when did Argentina outlaw tobacco advertising. Parisienne is known as a singular in the German-speaking world, whereas in Argentina it is known under the plural. Both flavors of Parisienne, with or without the S, were bought out by Anglo-American tobacco in 2000. 2000 is also the punchline that takes us to the second ad. It's the end of the millennium. Of course, back in the late 90s, there was the whole Y2K craze going on, something that was massively repeated in the build-up to another non-event, the Mayan Apocalypse in 2012. Hence, turn of the Millennium products tending to concentrate on the dark side of what we thought the future was going to be. It wasn't a Simpsons-esque depiction where the Ron Hauge plotline of life's a glitch, then you die, causes all of Springfield's electronics, and the world in fact, to go haywire in the dawn of 2000. In this commercial, we have a futuristic Adam and Eve, the kind of thing you would expect for a commercial depicting a possible Year Zero, aka 2000. Somewhat bolder eyes and with sense of lease put across the body. A lack of colour to give a sense of futurism and futurama, and the all-encompassing soundtrack. I almost forgot everything seems to be chromed like the SpongeBob episode SB129, Actually, it came out on Millennium Eve, so that's that. Axe or links, because Unilever had taken the advantage of joining the Millennium Advertising bandwagon by launching a 2000 limited edition of its deodorant. Something tells me that they were having sex at the end of the commercial. See what I mean? One of the silver leaves fell. Giga. Mere six and a half months to go before the millennium, and people are still taking advantage of every possible permutation of 2000 or 21. Eagle Eye Views missed out on a small glitch. Born as an experiment in the parking lot of Alto Avellaneda, it's still around as of now. Only recently they made an entire 360 show out of it. Daminato, un viaje sorprendente. Not a commercial with 2000s typed onto it. Like, how many of these have we seen in a row? Like, three? Vivi Bariloche con Daminato. La emoción de tenerlo todo. This is Daminato, an internal travel agent that still exists as of the time of writing. I need to take an intermission. 
Esprinab, 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 Esprinab. Con la oferta más insólita en el mundo de Esprinab. A tan solo moneditas. Toda la jerarquizada línea Esprinab con la oferta insólita en el comercio de su barrio. Esprinab, la gaseosa de Mar del Plata. Esprinab, Esprinab. Now backtrack to May 1999. Come on. En la metro pasa de todo. Please have songs featuring the Gero Gary Gege Gay, I promise. 6am, 6pm, el exprimidor con las noticias que van y vienen. This format still exists. It just moved across a bunch of radio stations because, yeah. La metro todo el día. Radio total. Con noticias a tiempo y la música que nadie pasa. La metro, rápida, clara, fuerte. 95.1, clava la metro, hace la tuya. Amusing concept promotes radio station with metro in the name, since in most countries, the subway is the metro. Calling a radio station Subway FM in the Anglophone world would lead to legal trouble from Subway the restaurant chain. Metro 95.1 was never a sister station of Channel 9. Ari Paluch seems to have narrated and directed the whole thing. Ya salió revista Super, TV Guía. super TV Guide? What's a super about it? Juan D'Artes dice, gracias a Dios mi hijo se salvó y cuenta la angustia que sufrió durante el mes que Tomás estuvo internado en grave estado. Carmen Barbier y Santiago Val vivieron una segunda luna de miel en Nueva York. Imágenes exclusivas de la película de Susana. Yeah, yeah, much like the average TV Times ad from pre-1991. Without the music. Y como siempre, la programación más completa de televisión abierta y de cable. Eagle Eyed viewers notice that the Channel 13 logo is upside down. Then the American way, listening the shows not by the channel, but at the time of starting. Kind of confusing, really, for someone who was used to listing by the channels. In fact, in neighboring Chile, they did that. The same also happened in Argentine Cable Magazine. Oh, great, Garfield and Friends is on Cartoon Network. Revista Super TV Guía, solo un peso. Hay gente que necesita llegar actualizada. Para viajar informado, muévase con Infotrans. Aside from a commercial with the then Pope in it, 14 years before an actual Argentinian claimed its title, and a commercial that kind of confuses you because it goes to great pains to not show what exactly it's for, Infotrans still exists in today's codic age. By the way, the shot at the end of the green screen boss reminds me of another De Gaulle's commercial. Comprar y vender acciones por internet es fácil. As easy as dial up. Conseguir información actualizada para realizar esas operaciones también. Hace clic en cronista.com. 100% confiable. El Cronista es a business newspaper, kind of like the Wall Street Journal, whatever equivalent you have in the country where you're watching this. All this internet nonsense makes you believe that they were the first Argentine newspaper to go online five years before this break was taped. You need to go away for a while. Vos sabés cuándo empieza tu día, pero no cuándo termina. Café Aspirina. Siempre para arriba con Café Aspirina. Salió revista pronto. Of course, running off the ads of a celeb magazine. This time, it's an ordinary magazine because of the Martin Fierro, a.k.a. the Argentine Emmys. La noche de la bronca. Lo que nadie contó de la fiesta de los Martin Fierro. El enojo de Susana Jiménez y Moria Casán por irse con las manos vacías. Todos los fotógrafos rodearon a Suar cuando anunciaron el Martín Fierro de Oro. Of course, there are two pages worth of the Barbara Dex Awards for this sort of thing. Read it as almost exclusively cleavage. Georgina vio ganar a Carmen Barbier y su reemplazante en Movete. Y Julián Weich se fue indignado después de perder dos veces con Tinelli. Revista pronto, solo dos pisos. 
I saw Televisión was a peculiar face in Argentine TV. Prime's investment was cut short because of a game-changing event. The Argentine financial crisis of the early aughties. Prime sold its stake to JP Morgan in 2001. Their days outside of Australia were numbered at the same time as the Kiwi Prime channel, who refused to adopt the new Prime Australia wordmark, was sold off to PBL in 2002, aka Kerry Packer, aka the Nine Network. When Kerry Packer died and had a massive omen, Sky New Zealand took over and still own it now. I saw rebranded twice under that name, but nobody wanted it, and in 2002, JP Morgan sold it to Daniel Haddad. Canal Nueve resumed operations, by which I mean the name. In 2007, it was sold again, this time to the controversial Mexican Guatemalan media magnate with American residents, Remigio Ángel González of the Alba Visión network of mostly Tesco value television channels with little or no substance. Compared to their networks in, say, Central America, they seem to have had a more professional branding and output. At the end of the 2000s, rumors circulated that El Nueve, as that has been called since 2017, was on sale. And they were ridiculing their past decades' actions by calling it the Canned Imports Channel. El Nueve, el canal de las latas. Ah, ya, ¿cómo? ¿No hay más latas? Oh, ¿Qué ponemos? The selling point was the fact that he now had more hours of live programming in an average working day. Finally, in November of 2020, the channel's current owners, Grupo Octubre, took over, and Argentina became the first country in the Alba Vision Empire where the ghost, as he is called due to his over-reliance on figureheads to control more than two television channels in a given country, left the audiovisual landscape. Even the radio station was sold. Technically, we will say something similar about the situation in Nicaragua, where he is close friends with Daniel Ortega, and his children control an almost equal number of channels. And even the number of channels have been put under influence by the government. One thing I didn't notice is that Argentina is a country that was actually mostly created by Italian immigrants that somehow speak Spanish instead of Italian. All this Italian nonsense is just a shameless plug for the next published hard sell episode, A Cell for Europe 2022 Part 1, Italia. But it won't be Rai. It will be... Stay tuned. Aquí finaliza su programación, Azul Televisión. Aquí finaliza su transmisión, Azul Televisión. Prosperando con el pueblo. Con ustedes, el baile del 10, versión verano.